up y'all welcome back to the channel today we're gonna do a video about how to sharpen your chainsaw specifically we're gonna use the steel two-in-one file this is a tool that I'm a big fan of I had a good friend of mine a couple years ago teach me how to actually use this uh, and these tools are wonderful uh, it can save you having to send your chains to the shop to get them sharpened uh, and and you know they're really easy to use they're not too expensive um, you know you can change out the files they're they're really great so let's get into it so first things first, you need to make sure that you've got the right file guide and right file size for whatever your bar and chain calls for. Okay, so you can see here on this tool, this is a .325, so this is what we need to work on this saw. That same diagram can be found right here on your saw. A little diagram there you may not be able to see it in the video but if you have a steel chainsaw that's where it will be one thing to check if you've been using your two-in-one file for a while run your finger over the file and make sure that it's still got some bite to it these files will wear out over time and you may need to just replace it with a couple more you can change your files out you just open this top here the flat file comes out in the middle you can replace that and then the two stick files come out on either side. Just make sure you pay attention which way you, they came out so that way you put them back in the same way because they do go a certain way. Okay, so when we're sharpening a chainsaw, the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna find a good starting point so that way it's easy to know where you started sharpening and where you need to end sharpening. So conveniently, the master link on steel chainsaw chains is either painted green or yellow. This one here is painted green, and both of those cutters are actually going in the same direction, whereas the rest of them are alternated back and forth. So this is gonna be our starting point. Find that spot where the two cutters are the same, or the link is painted, and then you'll know where you started every time. Another thing about the color of your chain that's important to know, green chains are anti-kickback chains developed by steel, and they work really well. Uh, it's typically, if you're not super familiar with running chainsaws, a green chain is what you want to stick with. And we're not going to get into the specifics about all the different types of chains today, but I just wanted to let you guys know about that so you know what to look for. So this is a green chain. It's an anti-kickback chain, and it's semi-chisel. This is a, probably going to be the most common uh, chain that you'll see out there. So that's the chain that we're going to sharpen today. All right? Okay, so there's a couple different angles that you're gonna wanna look for whenever you're sharpening your chain. Conveniently, this two-in-one file has a perfect 30-degree angle built into it, which is the same angle as your typical cutter tooth. You wanna make sure that you line up this angle and this angle with your bar, okay? You get this thing lined up, so this 30-degree angle is going in line with my bar. And then I want this angle that's coming up from the bar and over, I want that to be a 90 degree angle. So I don't wanna come down and I don't wanna go up. I wanna make sure that I'm getting a clean 90 degree angle so that way that cut is consistent every single time on each cutter. So let's get into the anatomy of this two-in-one file a bit here for a second. So we've got two round files and then we've got one flat file in the middle. So these round files are what actually sharpens your cutter, and then the flat file is what files down your depth gauge or your raker. So that's how that works. This is your depth gauge or your raker, and then this is your cutter. But that's the anatomy of the two-in-one file, so you know a little bit about how it works. The one great thing about steel is they really think about their user whenever they design their products. So it's conveniently got pictures of your saw and then it's got arrows of the direction that you're supposed to file. So if you ever forget, you know, it kind of gives you a friendly little reminder that if you line, you know, like if you line it up wrong, then hey, like you didn't, you're not doing it right. So it gives you that friendly little reminder uh, with that arrow there. Don't mind the rooster in the background. It gives you that arrow up top and then it gives you this nice little picture of your chainsaw and then a diagram of your chain here on the other side. The next angle that we're gonna look for is gonna be that 30 degree angle. And so the 30 degree angle is this angle here on this plastic end 
as well as this angle here on the plastic end in comparison with the bar. Now if you notice, steel is conveniently placed an etch mark on the side rails of the 2-in-1 file, both here and here. And so that way, as you're going across the face of each cutting tooth, you can make sure that your angles are staying consistent and you're not getting too out of shape. Okay, so really the end goal, let me put some gloves on here so I'm being safe and I don't cut myself since we're gonna get into sharpening this chain. Go ahead and put my safety glasses on too. So really the end goal here is, is gonna be perfect geometry. If you pull a brand new chain out of the box, you know, it's got perfect geometry. Um, now granted, the you know, you may get a chain that's defected or, or whatever, but for the most part, every single chain is gonna be really consistent and each cutter tooth is gonna be consistent angles all the way across the chain. The next big thing that you really wanna think about is the amount of metal that you're shaving off uh, which, with each stroke of your two-in-one file. I personally flip the saw back and forth whenever I sharpen, and I only sharpen with my right hand because I'm right-handed. Uh, but you'll tend to see that one side of the cutters will be sharp, and you know there will be a significant amount of metal cut off, whereas the other side, uh, the cutters will you know maybe be sharp, but there won't be as much metal taken off. And I've noticed that in myself, and, I, and how I've corrected that is by flipping the saw back and forth and only using my right hand. But commonly what will happen is somebody is, is you know, gotten good with their skill of sharpening, and they're right-handed, and they, they get good at their right-handed cutters, but then they go to try and sharpen with their left hand, you know, the other way, and they just don't take quite as much metal. So that's just something to keep in mind. As you're sharpening your chain, just be sure that you're taking off the same amount of metal each time. Uh, you don't necessarily have to count the strokes, as in one, two, three. Uh, you just need to pay attention to how much metal and how much force you're using uh, with the file on the chain each time. Uh, counting can be effective, but sometimes if you're not using the same amount of pressure with each stroke, counting really isn't doing you much good. This file guide here is the grandfather to the two-in-one file, and it works really well. It's actually one of my favorite tools in my entire toolbox out of all the tools I have. I really like this file guide, and it works really well. But we'll get into that in another video. This chain is brand new. I used it the other day. I ran three tanks of fuel cutting firewood here on the farm, and this chain has still got some, some bite to it. Uh, but it definitely needs to be sharpened up. Try to get a consistent amount of material off of each cutter, so that way we're keeping everything the same size and, and we're keeping it clean and good geometry. So, this is what it will look like. And then we'll just do like so. So one, two, three. And as you make your, your third and fourth stroke, you'll, you should be able to feel, it should get a little bit easier. So you've, you've gotten past that rougher metal. Uh, and then once you get you know, that cleaned up, then it should get to where it's a lot smoother. So again, we just wanna make sure that we're, we're paying attention to that, that line and keeping those consistent. It's a little bit tight the first time that you sharpen a chain actually. Uh, so you may have trouble, if it's a brand new chain and it needs to be sharpened, uh, you may have trouble getting the file in there at first. That's kind of the trouble that I'm having here. Uh, but it's nothing to be worried about. Uh, it just, you know... <clears throat> so that's the main things to, to pay attention to, is your angles. Make sure that those angles are consistent, that those notches, you're paying attention to them, those laser etches in the side rails of the file, uh, and, and just make sure that that angle stays consistent through your whole pass. Um, and then again the, next, again, the next thing is to make sure that your angle is consistent here, that you're not going down or up. You know, you don't wanna, you don't wanna make the shape of these cutters different. You just wanna clean up the existing shape that's there. Another great thing is there is a laser etched mark on the back side of the tooth as well, and that laser etched mark is going to have a 30 degree angle in it. So if you're just freehanding your, your chain, you can follow that 30 degree angle to, to keep your geometry consistent. Another thing with this laser etched mark 
is that is actually where you have to stop sharpening. So if you've sharpened your chain all the way back to that laser etched mark, that chain will be put out of service after that point. All right, we got that side done. Now I'm gonna flip this saw around here, like I said before. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can sharpen a chainsaw. Uh, this is just kind of the method that I've come up with. And now I've got the saw flipped around. So with this side, what's the most comfortable for me um, is if I kick the saw to the side a little bit, just how I'm standing here, just the, the general uh, stance that I'm in and where the saw is positioned. Uh, in comparison to my body, this is just what works best for me. Now, like I said, there's there's many different ways to do this. Uh, so you're going to have to find what works best for you, what body positioning, uh, you know, depending on the height of your workbench or your work surface. Uh, you may be working on a stump out in the woods. It really just depends on what you're doing in any given moment. And we've just got two cutters to go here. So we'll get these last two cleaned up and this saw will be sharp and ready to cut some firewood. If you guys have any questions, leave some comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to be able to answer your questions if I can. Uh, if not, I can probably point you to the resource where you can find the answer to your question. I really appreciate you guys watching today. All right, this saw is sharp and ready to cut some firewood. So let's do it. that'll do it for this video thank you so much for watching we really appreciate it if you've liked the video so far please give us the like and subscribe below it definitely helps the channel out we really appreciate it i hope you guys learned something today i hope you can take something from this video and be able to apply it to your life because that is our goal is to keep people safe give them the ability to do things themselves and you know be sustainable so thanks again and have a great day be safe